Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of What's the Point, where we get straight to the point on topics impacting the cloud, data center, and overall IT industry. Today's topic is another interesting one that may be impacting you and your peers. So digital transformation, IT transformation, and the cloud adoption. All of these concepts have taken the business world by storm. But what's really driving these efforts? In short, it's all about the data. All of these modernization efforts are really a way for businesses to adapt to a data-driven economy. In this episode of What's the Point, we'll, we'll chat with Chris Fuller, Principal Solutions Architect from Pure Storage, about how the data-driven economy has changed the way we do business, especially in IT. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Hey, thanks, Matt. It's good to be here. So, Chris, let's get straight to the point on this topic. To get us all on the same page, can you describe what the data-driven economy is for our viewers? Yeah, so the, the data-driven economy, as you kind of alluded to in your intro, is uh, really a result of business and, and, and then ultimately what's driving IT transformations in, in our industry today, right? It's the, you know, how do um, companies, regardless of what your, your vertical or whatever your expertise is, how do companies get as much data as they possibly can and then make strategic decisions, both economically as well as, you know, getting an edge in the marketplace? How do they use that data in order to have a competitive advantage or be able to deliver a, a product or um, a service to their customers that um, their competitors can't deliver, right? I uh, jokingly, and, and uh, this, this movie kind of dates me, there's a movie called Sneakers, um, uh, with, with Robert Redford that, that's out there and, and ben, ben Kingsley plays a character named Cosmo and uh, in one of the lines he, he stresses, he says, look, the world, and, and keep in mind, this is from 1992, he stresses in there, he says, you know, the world is not about who has the most weapons, who has the most energy, it's all about the ones and the zeros. Um, and when you kind of reflect back and think, wow, that was like 30 years ago that statement was made, um, it's very, very true, right? It's uh, whoever has the data and the companies that have the data to make strategic decisions are the ones that have the advantages um, in the marketplace today. And, and I think that's kind of sums up what a, a data-driven economy is. He who has the information um, controls a lot of the keys and, and, and a lot of the information that uh, they need to be competitive. So why is the data-driven economy such an important thing for businesses to address these days? Yeah, I think, um, so uh, business transformation, right? So since businesses are transforming, the, the old ways of doing business or making strategic decisions about your business um, don't always play and, and hold true, right? What, what was good um, business decisions or good business strategy 20 years ago um, was really founded on what folks had done in the past, um, what they had seen other companies maybe dabble their toe in and, and maybe been successful or maybe not been successful. But I think data has, has opened up uh, kind of a, a whole new book of management, if you will. Um, it, it gives us real scientific backing to understand uh, what we should be doing as a company um, and what maybe we shouldn't be doing as a company. So maybe sometimes they always say, follow your gut. You know, sometimes the data says your gut is not right. Um, it, it's following a different trajectory. And, and so I think the data has, has really transformed how companies look at business. Um, it is driving their decisions. And, and you're seeing that with investments, um, not just in IT infrastructure, but in how do we gather as much data as we possibly can. Um, you know, data scientists didn't exist outside of, of NASA or, you know, large institutions many, many years ago. And now you have large corporations that are doing anything they can to tap into a data scientist to say, look at all this information I have, what can I do with this to gain a competitive advantage, right? Um, with my competitors or in the marketplace. So, so how are businesses addressing this data driven economy and this boon of data? Are they doing it on their own? Are they using a managed service provider of sorts? Or how are they looking at that? Yeah, we're we're seeing we're seeing a mix of that, right? And, and being at Pure, right, uh, we're we're at the forefront of data and storage. Um, you know, storage is a uh, storage is a very interesting segment of, of IT to be in because uh, data is growing. Uh, it's growing very very fast. Uh, I very rarely have 
conversations with customers, uh, if ever, that I can think of where they said, look, I just have too much data. Um, I need to get rid of some of this, some of this data and not use it anymore. So um, I think companies are figuring out, you know, economically and, you know, both, both resource wise, uh, whether or not they can support collecting that data themselves and analyzing it themselves, or do they need to reach out to, to a managed service provider, um, you know, such as a, such as a tier point, right, is a, is a great example. Um, I think, you know, I, I mentioned data scientists earlier. Data scientists are extremely difficult to come by. Um, and it's a very expensive resource, right? I, I, I tell folks today that are, are just now joining their IT infrastructure uh, kind of a learning path. I said, man, if you, if you like data and you, you like that analytics, go into data science because it is growing like crazy and everyone's looking for one. And, you know, managed service providers usually have a data scientist or two on staff. And so that really prevents a, an end user customer who's trying to figure out what they're going to do with all this data, it prevents them from having to go and hire somebody, right? So instead they can leverage an MSP to, you know, say, hey, look, I need a data scientist for a month. So I'm going to leverage your service that you're providing to be able to help analyze all this information that's coming in and, and try to make sense of, of all of it because it's, it's overwhelming and it's, there's a lot that sits there. So you, you mentioned, you kind of got into a little bit about um, the benefit of using a managed service provider. Are there any other additional benefits of doing this all with a, a provider who specializes in this? Sure. I, th I think, you know, a couple quick ones that always come to mind when, when leveraging a service provider is, um, you know, a lot of folks when they're standing up a new project, maybe there is a, a, a big data project, right, there, or initiative that a, a corporation has come up with. Um, there's a lot of investment that's needed in order to stand those kinds of things up, right? And it's not just the infrastructure. Yes, there's, you know, um, a lot of infrastructure that needs to be stood up in order to accumulate and store all this data and put it into a format that makes sense. Um, there's resources that you have to go out and you have to invest in um, to be able to run all this infrastructure. And, and sometimes these projects prove out to um, not provide the benefit, right? The, the cost benefit is not there. And so leveraging a service provider is kind of a, you know, I describe it as you, you pay by the drip. And so while I don't want to go stand up something that's going to have a, a, an ROI of 12 months or 18 months down the road before I actually start realizing um, that value back, I need a value now. And a lot of times leveraging a service provider, you can, you can pay by that drip. You can understand what benefit it's going to bring your business. And then you can understand um, much easier kind of that, that real time, uh, you know, being, being a cash flow positive thing from day one, I'm going to hire a data scientist. Um, I'm going to leverage a tier point Tier point's going to run this for a month or so. And I'm going to get some valuable, you know, business insights uh, out of that mix. And then I also think it's, it's a financial decision, right? Um, depending on your particular company, um, sometimes, and, and even within companies, it changes quarter by quarter based on what Wall Street is looking for. Um, companies become very CapEx heavy or they become very OpEx heavy, right? And so sometimes your, your finance department may be saying, you know, we need to not go spend all this CapEx outlay, but if you can funnel this to an OpEx expense, that's fantastic. And that's where I think, you know, managed service providers come in. Again, you guys are going to charge on an OpEx based model. It's a, it's a monthly recurring revenue. It's a subscription um, that you're, you're subscribing to versus again, these large cash outlays that you have to justify over time. And so, um, I think there's the, the resource piece. There's the, we need to buy before we, or try before we buy scenarios. And then there's these, um, you know, financial or resource decisions, right. That companies have to make. Um, and that's where service providers I think are, are fantastic. And you guys have done it a lot of times, right. That's the other piece. Um, you know, take a, take a small commercial account or a, 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 a you know, small enterprise account. First time dabbling into something such as big data, um, maybe they should leverage an MSP who's done this for, you know, a hundred other customers. And so they know the gotchas and they know, nope, don't do it this way. Right. This is not the most valuable way to, to do this or look at this. And so leverage that expertise um, is what we always try to share with our customers. So that's a good piece of advice. Um, my next question for you is uh, what other advice would you give to businesses looking to kind of modernize and, uh, address the data-driven economy while also improving customer experience? Yeah, I think, you know, look, customer experience will, will come as you analyze the data and you figure out what changes, right, that, that you need to make based on what that data sits there. And so, 
you know, my advice to, to companies that are, are starting to dabble into big data or data analytics, um, specifically with the outcome of I want a better customer experience or I want a better business outcome, um, is really collect everything that you can. Um, that's, that's easy to say from, from a storage guy's perspective. Um, but collect everything that you can because sometimes there are tidbits, um, you know, there, there's ones and zeros that, you know, sitting around a, a boardroom table, you may decide oh, that's, that's not really all that important that I capture that particular piece of information. Um, but later on, it might be into to someone who is such as a data scientist, um, those guys are, are really trained to look at those nuances and how do I pair that nuance with the obvious data to really come up with something that's transformational. So, you know, capture all the data that you possibly can. You never know what you might be able to use. Um, and in worst case, if you, if you don't need it, right, it's, it's something that can be tossed out, but uh, collect data, collect data, collect data. Um, there, there's hidden tidbits everywhere inside that information to make good, good business decisions. Excellent. Any other, any, anything else you would like to share on the topic? Um, no, I think it's just, you know, I, I always encourage those to, you know, reach out for help, right? It's um, whether that, you know, work with your, if you have a storage vendor, you're already working on site. If you're, if you're an on-prem company that is running your own data center, um, you know, definitely reach out to, you know, uh, a managed service provider just to start asking some of the questions. I think uh, a lot of customers, uh, you know, that I, that I talked to as well, you know, again, they may be large commercial, small enterprise customers. And they say, well, I'm already have a data center and I'm already doing these things and I already own the asset. I don't really have a need for, for a managed service provider. And, and I always encourage them. I say, you know, look, managed service providers, um, for the most part, and, and to your point is true to this as well. You know, they can handle everything from your basic co-location, um, all the way up to a fully managed service. So if, if you think you're going to be going down a journey, um, Give, give an honest thought, right, to, to leveraging an MSP. It, it allows you to free up resources. Um, those resources can then be focused on what your core business is, right? Do you, do you need to be paying a, a storage engineer daily to, you know, turn knobs and dials and, and tweak things? Or should you leverage, should you leverage the, the experts at, at your point to manage that on a daily basis? And then that storage engineer can go off and figure out, you know, how do I maximize, um, you know, how do I maximize putting my data in the right tiering model so that, um, you know, I'm, I'm using my space effectively and I'm getting good ROI on the investments that I've made. So, you know, never, never think that a, a managed service provider is, is off the table. Um, I also find a lot of customers don't really realize that they're using a managed service provider. Probably the easiest one is, is asking someone, do you use Office 365? And if the answer is yes or, or Google Suite, um, any of those things, you're actually using a service, right? Cause you're not hosting it yourself. Someone else is. And so that I think kind of broadens the mind sometimes to, um, you know, think about leveraging other things off to a service provider and, and, and doing that and new projects, right? That's my other big one that I always plug service providers for is if you have an initiative that you are coming up on that, you know, you don't know what the outcome is going to be. Um, reach out to reach out to a service provider, right? They'll, they'll tell you, Hey, we've gone through this before this exercise, or we've gone through these types of transformations before. Um, it's a good idea. Or it's a bad idea, but again, it gives you an ability to really try before you buy. Um, and and I, I think there's, there's a ton of power behind that. And, and again, leveraging the expertise of companies such as Tierpoint point that, that have, you know, hundreds of resources to help guide you through some of those transformational journeys. Well, thank you. Thanks for the plug. <laughs> yeah. We appreciate having you on today. This was very enlightening. Um, we appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, no, no problems. We, we appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thanks for, the, thanks for the spotlights. So thank you all for watching today uh, for another fun episode of What's the Point? Um, if you want to watch more, uh, check out our YouTube channel and they're all there. So we'll, we look forward to seeing you for the next one. Thank you. Thanks.